It's funny. Each one of the four Gospels contains the story of the cleansing of the temple. And yet they all tell it in a bit of a different way. One of the Gospel writers places it on Palm Sunday, connects it right with Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. In another one, they place it at the very, very beginning of the gospel story. Here in Mark, we have it just about midway through. And Mark connects the story of the cleansing of the temple with this odd, odd story about a fig tree. Each one of the gospel writers took the reality and the truth of the story of Jesus and they placed it at different places in their telling of the story because they were trying to make a point to the people to whom they were writing. And Mark wanted to make a point about fruitfulness and the church. That the church was meant to bear fruit. What does that mean for us? What kind of fruit do you think God is asking of the church in 2021. We can list off all the concerns in the world, can't we? We, we don't even have enough fingers to, to list off all the great concerns there are. How would we say the church is bearing fruit? How is the church helping us to address some of those grave concerns? And sometimes we can think of the concern that's like right in front of us, but we forget that we've got a global church, a church that spreads through the whole world. And so if we were to look at the whole world and ask, what are the, what are the, the big things that our church needs to do to be seen as bearing fruit in the world? We can also get very, very specific. Look at our own little parish right here in Seneca County and ask, does God look at us and see us as fruitful? What are the kind of fruits that God expects of us here at All Saints? We can break it down even further, can't we? And look at our own personal life and say, what kind of fruitfulness is my life bearing? If God were to approach me today and look for good fruit, what's the good fruit that he would find? The other thing Mark does, he connects this whole business about the work of the church and the business of fruitfulness, and wouldn't you know, he ties it to mercy and forgiveness reminds us that God listens to our prayers and there isn't anything we can't ask God for. And in the midst of that kind of confidence, he says, and when you stand to ask God for anything, make sure you ask for forgiveness for anybody that's offended you so that God and God's great goodness will give to you in the same way that you ask him to give mercy to others. Sometimes we get tripped up with mercy. Sometimes we don't go far enough in extending mercy. We hold on to hurts, we hold on to grudges, we hold on to grievances, we hold on to all kinds of old, 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 old things from the past. Jesus connects the work of the church with fruitfulness, fruitfulness with the work of prayer, and prayer with the work of mercy. 